What's up brand builders, Stephen Harahan here of brandmasteracademy.com and in this video you're going to learn what a brand persona is and how to create one. So you can develop a guide for your brand's human expression and win more customers through familiarity. Now, if you're new to the channel and you want to build brands that go beyond the visuals and the logo using strategy, psychology, and creative thinking, then you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. If you want to fast track your results, make sure you grab the Pro Brand Strategy Blueprint. It's a free download and the link is in the description. Now, if you have any experience in marketing or branding or even general business, then you'll have seen plenty of articles and videos around the idea of gaining a competitive advantage in the marketplace or standing out in the market or grabbing that attention. And these all play on the idea that you need to have something different in order to get the attention of your customers. Now, although it is absolutely critical in having the right offer and the right message for the right person, understanding exactly who that person is, what they're attracted to and how to deliver the message to them is becoming increasingly important. And that's where the brand persona comes in. So what is the brand persona? Well, it's the human character that your brand communicates with, and it's developed based on who the audience is and what they're actually attracted to. And it's made up of a series of elements. And those elements include your brand personality, those personality traits that your brand communicates with. It's based on the brand's voice. What traits do they use within the voice? It's based on the ideas, opinions, and attitudes of the brand, which really bring the brand persona to life. Ultimately, your brand persona is about that humanistic expression of your brand. So why do brands need a human persona? Well, we are most certainly in the age of the human brand. That is a brand that communicates through human characteristics. Now, years ago, brands didn't have to do that. They sent out messages into the marketplace through monologue. That was one-way communication, one-way broadcast communication, and the idea was that over time, enough messages would stick in the market. But today, you can't do that. You can't simply send out messages time and again. Today, it's all about dialogue. It's all about that two-way conversation with the consumer. The consumer has a really, really powerful voice today, and they wield that power through their buying decisions. If they see a brand behaving in a certain way that they don't like, they'll go elsewhere. They'll spend their money elsewhere, they'll go with another brand who aligns with who they are and the values that they hold dear. If brands go out into the marketplace with monologue messages, with one-way broadcast messages, they're not going to make that connection. And today, that is exactly what the modern consumer expects. They want that human connection. They want that dialogue. They want the brands that they do business with to listen to their needs. Now, in order for a brand to engage in dialogue, it needs a human personality. Brands, in essence, are inanimate objects, and they're made up of a series of processes and systems that represent the business. But a brand comes to life through its communication and how it communicates, and the brand personality and the human brand persona plays a huge role in that. So how do people connect with brands? Well, it's the same way that people connect with people. If you think about how you're attracted to other people and what attracts you to other people, it's through their behavioral traits. How do they behave? And is that behavior aligned with your own traits or do they have something that you're attracted to? Now, this all plays out in the market every single day and it's all based on this primitive instinct and it all happens in our ancient reptilian brain which is all based on survival. We're drawn towards that familiarity because that familiarity represents safety and we push back on things that are unfamiliar because that represents danger. So this is how we connect with people and this is how we connect with brands as well. So we tend to do business with brands that feel familiar to us, that represent safety because ultimately that safety leads to trust and we do business with brands that we trust. So what's the difference between a brand persona and a buyer persona? Well, these two are distinctly different. They're often confused, but they are critically intertwined as well. Now, the buyer persona is a fictional character that represents who our audience is. The brand persona is a fictional character that represents who our brand is. But the brand persona, its job is to really connect with who that buyer persona is. And the way we do that is by really understanding 
that buyer persona by developing out that buyer persona so we know it on an intimate level we know who that audience is and once we know that once we have that information and once we know what they're attracted to then we can develop a brand persona to better connect and resonate with who they are so how do you develop a brand persona well developing a brand persona is all about bringing your brand to life and although it sounds complicated it's actually very very simple the way to do that is simply by understanding who your buyer persona is and what they want and developing your brand persona to give it to them. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in seven simple steps. Number one, identify your most influential buyer personas. Now you might have multiple buyer personas. You might have two, three, four, even five buyer personas, and they might represent different market segments or different people within a specific market segment. But some personas will be more important than others. Some will have more influence over the success of your business. So identify the most important buyer personas that have the most influence on the success of your business. Number two, extract their most influential traits. So between your multiple buyer personas, your top two or three buyer personas, what are the characteristics that are most influential within their personalities? These characteristics, whether they display these characteristics or they're attracted to these characteristics, will be a defining difference in appealing to who they are. Number three, identify the role they want your brand to play. Now, your brand could play different roles in the lives of your audience. And depending on who the audience is and what they want from your brand should determine whether you play a role that's about guidance or about inspiration or about protection. What is the role that your brand is going to play for your audience? Because this role will determine exactly how you should approach the market and how you should approach that buyer persona. Number four, align your brand with an archetype. Now, archetypes were developed initially by Carl Jung in the early 20th century as a way to categorize all personalities. Now, this framework is made up of 12 distinct personalities that represent pretty much all human personalities. You're more closely aligned with one or two of these personalities than the others. Now, archetypes were brought into the branding spectrum by Margaret Mark and Carl Pearson in their book, The Hero and the Outlaw. And we can use the archetypes framework as a way to identify who our audience is and what characteristics we should align our brand to. Number five, define your brand tone of voice and your language. So once you have a bit of direction based on the archetype framework, you can begin to develop out the tone of voice that your brand is going to approach the market with. So is your brand going to be soft and gentle and guiding, or is it going to be rough and gritty? What kind of tone of voice should your brand have? And what language profile should your brand have as well? Is your language going to be really professional or is it going to be based on slang and communicating on a much more human and basic level. So defining what your brand tone of voice is and the language profile that you use is really important. Number six, expand your brand personality. So you have that direction now with your brand archetype framework, your brand tone of voice and your language, but you need to expand out this personality. It's not enough to just have a handful of traits. You need to give your brand persona attitudes and opinions and an outlook on life. So really asking the question of your brand persona, what do you feel about this situation? What do you feel about the industry or the broader world? And this will really start to bring your brand persona to life. So it starts to feel like a real person. And number seven, use your brand persona as a guide. So your brand persona is just a guide for your brand communication. You will have many different touch points for your brand in the marketplace, whether it's your website co copy or your social media pages or your YouTube videos or your advertisements. You have many different touch points and having a brand persona now is a guide for you to go out and express your brand through human characteristics. So go out and use your human brand persona in your messaging, in your videos, in your website copy. And if you do this consistently over time, your brand will start to feel familiar. And if your brand persona is developed based on who your audience is and what they're attracted to, then this familiarity will be welcome to that audience. And that's when they start to develop trust towards your brand. Now, we can all relate to the comfort of familiarity. If you think about being in a strange place with strange people that you don't know, 
and then you hear a familiar voice or a familiar accent, you're drawn towards that familiarity because that familiarity represents safety. If something was to happen, you want to be close to someone that you have some kind of connection to. And again, this is all based on a primitive level. And if you understand the value of that, if you understand the value of familiarity and you approach the market in that way, if your first touch point, if your first engagement with your audience is through that sense of familiarity, then that is a foot that you have in the door. That is an advantage that you have over your competitors. And sometimes that's all you need. Just that little touch of familiarity could be enough to open the door for your consumer to do business with you. Now, if you are ready to develop a brand persona for your own brand, then brand archetypes are a great way to structure that personality and persona. If you wanna understand what brand archetypes are and how to use them to develop your own brand personality, then this video will help you out. Until next time, brand like a master, and I'll see you in the next video.